I want to bring in Thomas Ruskin now for more insight. He's a former police detective investigator in New York City. He's also the president of a CMP group. That's an internationally recognized investigative and security firm. Um, Thomas, why don't we start with some of the things that May Lee was just talking about, uh, that, that this radicalization. What do you make of that? I think that it, it's sort of depressing to me to understand that this guy was in contact with known terrorists or known Islamic jihadists, and none of our intelligence systems picked him up to at least go out and interview him or determine if he had become so radicalized that he and his wife might do this. Uh, it's rare for two shooters to be involved. Uh, it hasn't happened uh, in this country in quite some time, about 16 years ago, two high school students uh, killing classmates. Right. Why so rare? Why is this so different? Well, I'd like to believe it's so rare because law enforcement's on top of it. And now law enforcement around this country has broken up numerous plots. Never to my knowledge or my memory has it been a husband and a wife. I mean, it's always been either one or two people discussing stuff with each other, and they've been broken up, but they've been arrested beforehand. This is the first time that a combo team has gone into a place to shoot it up since Columbine. Now, Columbine changed the way that police respond to these things, which worked very successfully yesterday. Uh, when they search the couple's home, uh, we're getting uh, information now, a dozen pipe bombs, 2,009 millimeter handgun rounds, 2,500, 223 caliber assault rifle rounds, hundreds of tools that could have been used to make additional explosive devices. To me, it seems like there's a lot of red flags there. Um, do you think perhaps some neighbors may have seen something? And, and, and also the expense of this, uh, it, it's not cheap to go out and buy all of this stuff, is it? Well, that's something that the investigation is going to reveal. The feds, as well as the local investigation, is going to determine how they funded this or who funded it and who else may be able to be looked at and or arrested. That's part of the investigation now, and that's where investigators are going today. But, yes, it appears from reports I heard earlier that a neighbor did see suspicious activity and didn't report it because she didn't want to be seen as a racist. I think we're past that stage in, in the United States, where we have to now say, if you see something, you have to report it. Let law enforcement decide if it's relevant or irrelevant. Well, you're talking about law enforcement, FBI. Uh, they've, they've got these databases. They, they accumulate all this information about people. Why, you know, I know you've mentioned it a couple of times. Why do you think that this guy fell through the cracks? We don't know yet. I mean, that's something that always happens after the fact. And unfortunately, 14 people lost their lives. 21 people, as you reporter reported, are still in the hospital fighting for their life. We'll know that as weeks go on. It's not something that's going to be determined tonight or tomorrow. An investigation like this will take us to many different continents. But some of those factors will be revealed as time goes on. Thomas, getting back to this arsenal, do you think that they had designs on perhaps another attack after this one? It appears to me that with the number of bombs that were left behind in the house, with no intention or apparent intention to go back, yes, I think that they had designs on possibly one or two targets. But again, the investigation by law enforcement will determine what else may have been out there, who else they may have been chatting with, what else is on their computer, who else they've been in contact with. That's what the investigation will now reveal and possibly lead to more arrests. And as a former police detective investigator, what are, what are they doing right now? I mean, it, because it, initially it looked like this might be one of these things where this guy was unhappy and his, was a workforce violence. So they, they, they seemed like there was a disagreement. Do you think that was a ruse to kind of cover this? I mean, it's all very fascinating, very much a puzzle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it, it that portion is a puzzle. But that's less relevant to me as a former investigator. What's, what's important to me is where he became radicalized. Did his wife radicalize him? Because apparently he, she's from overseas and here on a visa based on her marriage to him. The fact that these two people would leave their six-month-old child to go carry out this attack probably presuming that they're never going to come home and have that amount of armor and armament with them is very distressing to me and something that we're going to have to look at in intelligence 
fashions to determine can we determine this in the future? Yeah, that's a big question. Thank you so much, Thomas Ruskin, joining us from New York Live.